Your soil has been through a lot this year. Between the rains, washing down nutrients, and plants uptaking the rest, you may or may not have soil that's adequate to grow the fall crop. So that's why testing your pH and your NPK is so important before the fall garden. Let's talk about NPK for a second. N, the nitrogen, helps the plants grow productive leaves. P is for phosphorus, and that helps the root development, which is going to collect all the other nutrients to help grow the plant. And the K is for potassium, and that's gonna help overall plant develop and help all those systems work together to give you a great crop. And you need to look at pH as kind of the gatekeeper. It allows everything else to happen. pH can kind of lock down the plant so it can't absorb the nutrients in the soil. The ideal range for pH within the soil is between six and seven, and there's a wide margin and even between plants that need a little bit more alkaline or a little bit more acidic. The other thing is when you're adjusting the nutrients, sometimes that takes a long time to happen. So testing now, testing early, and testing often means that you can make those adjustments and check and see how things are going throughout the course of the season. Acidic soil has a low pH, and it's like a vinegar or a, or a real tart lemony taste. And so that mouthfeel that you would have if you just drank straight up vinegar, that's kind of how the plant feels when it's sitting in acidic soil and it doesn't want to take up any of the nutrients or any of the water or any of the stuff it needs from the soil if it has that kind of reaction that you would if you took a, a big drink of something sour like that. Alkaline soil has a high pH and it's more like a soapy feeling or a baking powder coating and it doesn't let the roots kind of open up and take in the nutrients. You're either low pH and it's a tart feeling or you're high pH and it's just a a crunch down of the nutrients and that's why pH is so important. That's why you have to constantly adjust even as different crops require different pH levels throughout the season. Remember that range of six to seven is what we're looking for. In acidic soils like low pH, things like calcium is harder for the plants to uptake and at the same time you're building up some of the toxic metals like aluminum. And aluminum is not some crazy thing, it's just floating around the atmosphere. It's in all soil but the adjustment of the pH or as things change, it lets those toxins build up because they're not being uptaken by a plant. And those conditions often happen whenever we're having a lot of rain and it's really, really washing away all the other nutrients. Aluminum tends to stay around and this is also caused by an overuse of ammonium-based fertilizers, which for a lot of us doing more natural type of gardening, we're not using that type of stuff. If you're like us and you're developing a new plot line and we don't know what has ever been here, that could be the case. Raising your pH or if your soil's too acidic, you're gonna use something like lime, a nice fine coating, and remember, it takes about four to six months for that to actually break down. So just because you test this week and you put out some lime, it's gonna take a while for that adjustment to happen. Lowering your pH is often done with sulfur or aluminum sulfate. There's that aluminum again, so we're either worried that we have too much or we're putting it back in. That's why uh, testing is so important, is to make those adjustments so that plant can take up all the other nutrients combined. One of the more popular ways to replenish nitrogen is blood meal, and for phosphorus, you could use bone meal. And you can use something like green sand for the potassium or potash. Green sand does take a very long time to break down, upwards of six to eight months. So if you're going to use that, just know that it's going to be a longer haul and you may want to incorporate sulfate or potash. So when it comes time to testing your soil, you can do one of two things. You can collect your soil samples and send it off to the lab and wait a few weeks for the results. They are going to be very precise and there's going to be a ton of information that you may or may not have to get help interpreting. And oftentimes this can be done through your AgriLife Extension office or your local USDA office. The other thing that you can do is you can take a look at some of the infield stuff we have from uh, Luster Leaf here at Bootstrap Farmer. And we have multiple kits designed for uh, various budgets and how deep into the weeds you kind of want to go with it. Let's take a look at some of those real quick. So the Rappi Test Soil Test Kit is a budget-friendly, beginner-oriented kit that uses color compartments to test the soil. It tests pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And you basically mix soil with water and different capsules to then compare resulting colors to a chart. It's affordable and easy to use for new gardeners and it covers all the key soil metrics like phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, and pH. The downside is the color matching can be a little subjective and it's just going to give you a high, medium, low range type of situation so you can't really precisely dial in stuff but if this is your first time around, it's a perfectly great way to get started and to see some of those adjustments over the course of the season. Just remember you have about five tests uh, included for each one of those, and you would have to replenish those tests if you test often. The second test that we have is a Rappi Test digital soil test kit. It's a step up from the last one in this uh, digital version that provides numerical results for more precise readings. It also tests pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and calcium, and it works real similar. 
except for the difference is you have a test tube that you put in an ocular lens and that reads the lights for you instead of you having to do that subjective thing uh, with the other windows. It eliminates the guesswork with a little bit more precision. It's easy to read and it's more accurate than the previous test. It does require batteries and it's a little bit higher cost and it's great for gardeners who want more precision and are willing to invest in a mid-range tool. The next one is a soil pH probe meter that has an analog needle that moves back and forth so you can really dial down the preciseness of the test. Cons are it only tests pH and it works by inserting the probe directly into the soil for an instant pH reading. And by instant, it's about 30 to 60 seconds. No chemicals or batteries required. Fast results making it ideal for spot checking multiple areas. It's durable and easy to use. It's best for gardeners focused on pH adjustments and needing quick, frequent checks. I like this for high turn areas like lettuce that's going directly into a crop that needs different nutrients or different pH so you can do faster adjustments in the field. Then we have a three-way digital analyzer. It's multifunctional and it tests soil pH, temperature, and this one's a little bit different and it takes all the nutrients and kind of gives you an overall fertility score. It's not my favorite test of them, but if you're just doing spot checks here and there and you're wanting to see is your plant getting any nutrients whatsoever, it's great. I would use this if you're a gardener or a small scale farmer that's just looking to do rapid tests to see if conditions are right for a quick plant. Think raised beds, think a high turn garden, think potted plants, anything like that. And then there's the Luster Leaf Professional Soil Kit. It's very comprehensive and it's designed for serious gardeners or small scale farmers. I would say this is the most comprehensive test that's just below actually sending it off and getting all of the huge results that you would get from a professional lab. It tests pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium with enough tests to do 15 tests each. It works very similar to the other two chemical tests, but it does give you some more advanced testing. It's more cost effective and quicker than sending to a lab. And it's a little bit more cost and it's a little bit more uh, time involved than the other kits. But again, this is for serious gardeners or small scale farmers. So if we're testing in this field or eventually when we have the high tunnels built or going into the cover crops, those are gonna have different nutrients. And over time, the soil conditions here are going to be different than over there. And so we would use a kit like that so we can kind of get those quick results so we can change in the field without having to constantly send out for the yearly lab test. So again, we're right in the middle of developing this field. We did our test, the cover crop is down, we're already making our adjustments. So if you wanna see how we took all the data that we collected when we tested this field before our cover crop, hit me up in the comments and I'll tell you what we put down and that way you'll have exactly the same spreadsheet we have and then you'll be able to continue the test just like we are in the days to come. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're cover cropping right now. We'll be silage sharpening that and we're really getting this ready for a larger garden. Hope to see you in the next few videos. If you want more information on the testers we talked about, they are in the links below.